I sprint on treadmills, and no, you can't become an all-American athlete for that. But running on treadmills can help you train for races at track meets where you can become an all-American athlete. And any physical exercise can help you fight dementia. I use treadmill sprinting for both. I'm John Lambert, and I started running as a teenager just for fun. How much fun? Well, after I got a car, sometimes I'd drive it somewhere and decide to leave my car so I could run home up to about five miles. Then I'd get someone to drop me off later to pick my car up. Then one evening at a Boy Scout meeting, we all ran from our scout hut to a nearby levee to play King of the Hill, but I had to climb down out of a tree before I could go. But despite my friends getting a huge lead on me, I caught up to them and passed them easily. I just measured it with satellite maps, and it was about 300 yards. After they got to the levee, they asked me how I could possibly run as fast as I did, and I said I was just using some advice I had heard on a TV show to pick up my knees. I didn't pay any special attention to it back then, but I remembered that occasion after I started my journey at age 60 to find out how fast I can run. In my late 20s, I started developing two problems with my legs and feet, osteoarthritis and peripheral neuropathy. The neuropathy was due to hypothyroidism, which would not get correctly diagnosed and treated until I was 47 years old, and by then the damage to my legs and feet was especially severe. There was a period of time I could barely hobble around using a walking cane. Then I got a lot better for a while, and I was even able to run again. But then it got worse than ever. Finally, a doctor figured out my hypothyroidism. I got put on a thyroid hormone replacement, and my legs and feet very slowly got better. Eventually, I got to where I could run again. That's when I ran in a few 5K road races in my early 50s, and the first time I had ever run in competition. My best 5K time was 26 minutes and 23 seconds for an average speed of 7.05 miles per hour. It was also around then that I bought my first treadmill, a Reebok 8700 ES. I was very fortunate to be working for Microsoft at the time, and they had a policy of reimbursing employees up to about $1,000 a year for gym memberships or home gym equipment. I think my Reebok cost about that much, so it didn't cost me anything after reimbursement. Then in my mid-fifties, I started developing problems with my memory, and it wasn't normal getting worse with age. It was early-onset amnestic mild cognitive impairment, a form of dementia which often precedes Alzheimer's. Dementia is deterioration of intellectual abilities, such as memory, concentration, or judgment sometimes with emotional or personality changes. My jobs in IT had been based on my strong mental skills, and now I was slowly watching my brain deteriorate. As if that wasn't bad enough, in late 2012, I got infected with a virus that got into my brain. That's called viral encephalitis. Although it didn't kill me, it wreaked havoc on my brain, adding more dementia and I had to take a medical retirement to focus on recovering my health as much as possible. I've recovered from some of the worst of the brain damage, but I still have serious problems with things like memory, emotional stability, physical stamina, and verbal skills. The physical stamina problem doesn't prevent me from running sprints over a 20-minute period, or walking for up to an hour, but it means that after that, I'm usually too tired to do anything else until the next day or two days. In 2015, I signed up with 23andMe to get my DNA analyzed. Sometime in 2018, I was logged into their website and poking around and noticed it said my muscles might be better suited to speed rather than strength or endurance. That surprised me, but after thinking about it, I decided to see how fast I could run on my treadmill, which would go up to 12 miles per hour. I was used to running from 5 to 7 miles per hour, so I started there and tried faster and faster speeds. I seem to recall I was confused for the, maybe the first few weeks, because I could run at 9 or 10 miles per hour, 
but only for a few seconds instead of the 10 to 20 minutes I could run at 5 to 7 miles per hour. I don't think I realized right away that that was a normal difference between the aerobic level of intensity I was used to running and the anaerobic level of intensity in my maximum effort sprinting. Sprinting is the name for running with maximum effort. Then I learned the difference and that with anaerobic exercise you can't breathe fast enough to replace the oxygen you're burning. And it didn't help that I had exercise induced asthma that kicked in when I sprinted. So I started learning to adjust my expectations to sprinting no more than about 30 seconds. Over weeks I improved enough to be able to sprint at 11 miles per hour and finally reached 12 miles per hour. At that time I'd start by walking, push the button for 12 miles per hour and speed up my legs while the treadmill belt was speeding up. But I could only run at 12 miles per hour for a few steps before I'd have to push the button to slow it down to a walk again. I later learned that that method is called ramp up, ramp down. And its disadvantage is that before I could run at 12 miles per hour, I had to run at every speed below that while the treadmill was speeding up, which used up most of my running energy before I ever got to 12 miles per hour. Then I came across a YouTube video where someone sprinted on a treadmill using a hop on hop off technique and that was perfect for me. I learned to stand on the sideboards while the machine sped up, then do a running hop on. Lo and behold, I could run a full 30 seconds at my top speed of 12 miles per hour. Next I learned to increase the incline to increase the difficulty since my treadmill wouldn't go faster than 12 miles per hour and over more weeks I improved to where I could run for 30 seconds at 12 miles per hour with a 12 percent incline which was the best my treadmill could do. I found research with a chart that equates speeds with inclines to speed without incline up to 10 miles per hour in a 10 percent incline. I extrapolated that data up to 18 miles per hour in a 12 percent incline and it indicated that running 12 miles per hour with a 12 percent slope was approximately equal in energy demand to running 15 miles per hour without an incline. That made me very eager to see if I could actually run that fast. My wife Carla took me for a free one-time visit to a nice Planet Fitness gym where they had treadmills that would go up to 14 miles per hour. I stood on the footboards while the treadmill got up to 14 miles per hour I kept the incline at 0% and I hopped on. It was easy. It was so easy I felt like I was cheating. And after running so long at home at a 12% incline, running flat actually felt like I was running downhill. Then I got off, rested, and tried again at 14 miles per hour with a 3.5% incline, which my chart indicated should be about equal in energy to 15 miles per hour without incline. I could only do it for a few seconds but I did it and I felt like I was capable of more if I kept training. That made me keen to find a faster treadmill and ideally one I could use at home every day or more likely about every other day. So I began researching online for treadmills that could go at least 16 miles per hour and preferably faster. I found some but new ones were around $10,000 and some even cost more. I could get a new high-end manual treadmill which doesn't have a motor and therefore doesn't have a top speed but they still cost $5,000 or more for the high quality ones. I had never tried a manual treadmill and I didn't want to spend that much money on something I hadn't tried regardless of what other people said about them in reviews. Searching eBay and Craigslist found a few possibilities but they didn't work out until I found a used Precor 956i which had a top speed of 16 miles per hour. I told the seller I'd take it if it worked when I got there to buy it and my family took me to see it. I was excited. I got the speed up to 16 miles an hour and I took a deep breath and did a running hop on and I did it. I ran 16 miles per hour. I was only able to take about three steps at that speed without holding on, but I did it. 
We bought it, and with a big family effort, we got it to my house and reassembled it, and I started training on it. And very slowly, I started increasing how long I could sprint at 16 miles an hour. Somewhere around that time, I was surprised to discover that there are track meets for runners of all ages, not just for high school and college athletes or professionals. There are master's track meets for people aged 35 and over, and there are all-comers track meets for any age. And in the U.S., there are state and national track meets that are part of the national senior games for people aged 50 or over. If you've watched this long, I've got a question for you. Were you already aware of masters and all-comers track meets? Please let me know in the comments below, and I've put some links in the description for more information about those. For me, the prospect of competing in a track meet was intimidating, but I decided to try it anyway. I registered for one that was closest to our house, the Virginia Commonwealth Games, to be held indoors on Sunday, December 2nd, 2018. My wife Carla would drive us there and watch from the stands while one of my grown children would act as my caretaker in the competition area, getting me signed in on time, getting my shoes approved, making sure I didn't go to the wrong places or accidentally interfere with the race, things like that. So I bought my first pair of spiked track shoes and Carla or my kids took me to the local high school a few times so I could try running in track spikes on a real track. After watching a few YouTube videos about how to run hurdles, I also decided to try that. So I bought three folding practice hurdles and got taken to the local high school in a nearby park to practice that a few times. Then on Saturday, December 1st, Carla drove us to a hotel in Lynchburg, Virginia. Early the next morning, we went to Liberty University's new indoor track facility, where the indoor track and field events of the 2018 Virginia Commonwealth Games were being held. It was my very first track meet. The excitement gave me a lot of nervous energy while waiting for my first race, which was the 60-meter hurdles for men aged 60 to 64. I didn't know how to use starting blocks, so I got into a crouch when the command was given to get on our marks. Then the gun sounded and I took off. I ran fast, but not as fast as possible because clearing the hurdles was more important to me than maximum speed. I cleared the first hurdle and was kind of surprised. I kept going and cleared the next hurdle. In the 60 meter hurdles, there are five hurdles and I cleared all of them. Then there was nothing between me and the finish line, so I finally ran as fast as I could for that last little bit. I finished in 11.11 seconds, far better than I had considered possible for me. That time was well below the maximum of 11.7 seconds required to earn All-American status for 60-meter hurdles for men aged 60 to 64. So, in my first race, in my first track meet, I earned the All-American title. I didn't know about the All-American thing at that time, however, and after catching my breath for a while, my daughter took me over to a relatively quiet spot and I laid down on the floor to rest until my next event. That was the 60-meter dash, which was less stressful and more fun because I didn't have to worry about getting over hurdles, and I finished in 9.77 seconds which qualified me as a regional level competitor in that event. After another rest, I started the 400 meter dash. One lap of an indoor track is 200 meters, so a 400 meter race is two laps. Because the inside lanes are shorter than outside lanes, runners have staggered starting positions and have to stay in their lanes for about the first 150 meters. Then runners can ignore their starting lanes and everyone moves towards the inside lane. I ended the first lap, the halfway mark of 200 meters, in first place by a fair margin. I was running like Forrest Gump. Unfortunately, that's about where my exercise-induced asthma started kicking in. Also, unfortunately, my dementia limits my ability to think, and my mind stayed focused on a single thought run as fast as I can. 
My breathing got worse fast, and I became vaguely aware of hearing myself wheezing, but I couldn't understand what that meant, and somewhere around 350 meters, still in first place, I started staggering and flailing my arms. Then I passed out from insufficient oxygen and fell. I must have twisted around a bit while falling, because I broke my right shoulder, but from where Carla was recording in the stands, something was blocking the view when I fell. The other guys must have run past and finished the race, but when I woke up in a lot of pain, there were other people around me, including my daughter who was my caretaker on the event floor. They helped me stand up and get off the track and sit in a nearby chair. Another race was run, and then they let me walk the last 50 meters to finish my race. A young man named John walked with me and encouraged me because I was crying pretty hard from the pain, and he stayed with me a long time after that. My time in the 400 wasn't officially recorded, but I was glad I crossed the finish line anyway. I was registered to run the 200 meter dash next, but my racing for the day was over. When the pain didn't lit up on the two hour drive home, Carla took me to an emergency room where they figured out my clavicle was busted, and that meant I wouldn't be able to run again for weeks, and even walking was too hard for a while. But despite dementia, I learned to sprint anyway, and I became an all-American athlete in my first ever track meet. And very slowly, I think I'm still getting faster. That's why I've ordered a treadmill with a top speed of 18.6 miles per hour, a Technogym Skill Run Unity 7000, to help me find out just how fast I can run. Some of you might wonder why I can't work if I'm able to run 16 miles per hour. I think I'd be wondering that. Or if I can make videos, why can't I work? Well, I hope I can. My doctors say I can't work, but this YouTube channel is my attempt to prove them wrong. I'll talk about that in more detail in my next video, Dementia and Running. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and keep walking, running, or sprinting.